Hi, uh, I'm Ed. I am 31 years young. I am married to the love of my life, Mary Rebecca Wynn, and we've got four beautiful children, Jacob, Chloe, uh, Mia and Joshua. Uh, when I was three years old, I told the milkman that I wanted to be a London soldier. Um, and when I turned 19, I decided, well, I'm not going to let him down. I'm a one aspiration, so I joined the army. Um, I went into the recruitment office and said, um, who's going to Afghanistan next? And the recruiting sergeant went, the Irish Guards. I went, brilliant, I'll join them then. So that was it. Um, I did basic training, um, got everything ready, got to battalion. Um, and then they said to me, Ed, you're not going to Afghanistan because the company's full. You're going to Edinburgh to learn how to play a drum. And I took a bit of a double take. Um, but, you know, six months of extra pay up in Edinburgh was pretty good. So that was fine. So the Lord had his hand on me in that sense. And, um, and up I came to Edinburgh. I met Mary there in 2013, so the Lord obviously had a plan. Um, going out with her as part of a condition, it was, you know, you have to come to church with me, Mary's from a, from a Christian family. So up in Edinburgh, I spent the whole month up here with, up in um, Edinburgh with Mary and her family. Um, and it was there that I first heard the gospel preached. So I'd been sat under Robin Sidsurf's ministry uh, for a long time. I, we sort of see him as our family pastor, especially when we were nomadic Christians in the army, spending years everywhere. And he was preaching through one of the Gospels. Um, I believe it was when Jesus calmed the storm. And at the end of the, the sermon, as he was close, closing his points, he came to the point where he said, you know, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, you must. Um, and put your faith in him because he is the way, the truth and the life and none can come to the Father except through him. And so I laid it all on the line, um, you know, in my usual dramatic sense. And, and prayed in that moment to say, look, Lord, this is me. Like, if you're real, then, you know, use, use this opportunity, you know, show me who you are, like reveal, reveal yourself to me. Um, ended up with an amen. And then went up to, got in the car with Mary to drive her up to Aberdeen, because she was a student up there. Um, on the way, she put on the Paul Washer shocking youth message, but something in that, you know, that sort of, very hard hitting, fire and brimstone-y sort of preaching spoke to me, you know, it really spoke to my, the man in me, you know, who, who, who needs to be called accountable for the things that God has made me to be called accountable for. Um, and so I remember finishing that and saying like to Mary, like with like a smile on my face, I was like, I don't really, really know what's happening here. Um, but I spent that whole week working out where I was gonna to propose to Mary. Um, and I proposed to her on the Friday, we drove back down to Edinburgh and I was stood in my brother-in-law's kitchen who was, who was a militant atheist and is now probably my dearest brother in Christ. Um, and I remember, we were talking about that you're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and in Christ alone. And um, it just felt like someone hooked a car battery up to me. And just in that moment, you know, it made sense. Before coming to Christ, um, I suppose I wasn't really concerned with eternity you know I was young um, and sort of had everything before me and, and very much felt invincible but it was through the listening of the word that I realized that that I needed this you know that there was in me there was a hole that I couldn't fill with alcohol and other things you know it was nonsense because I would still feel empty and it was only when I tasted of the salvation of Christ that I realized that Christ had died for me. And it changed my life in a moment.